This is an introduction to user commands. User commands were added to the interpreter to help programmers cope with tools management. In itself, it is just another tool. To use them, you start a line with a right bracket, just like you would do with a system command using a right parenthesis. With a system command, for example, you can ask for wizid using a right paren. For a user command, you start with a right bracket. In this case, we will ask for the command calendar, for example. Here we are. And calendar displays its results in the session. APL plus Win and Dialog APL are the only APLs with user commands. Their implementation is different, but the overall result is the same. That is a better organization of your utilities. We're going to be using Dialog APL for the rest of this tutorial. If you want to list all the user commands that exist in Dialog APL, you use right bracket and question mark. We're going to have to page back and show you some of the commands that are available. As we can see here, there's a group of commands called salt that contains nine commands. There's another one with samples that contains two, another one with spice that contains seven commands, and so on and so on. To get help on a specific command, use right bracket question mark followed by the name of the command. For example, let's try in. Here we have some help. It tells you the complete name of a command, its syntax, in this case it takes one argument and takes two switches, flip, LU and APL. And APL takes a value. The location of the code is in this file here and there's a short description of the command. To write a new command, you need to write the code in a namespace or a class that contains at least three functions list, run, and help, like this. As you can see here, this namespace contains function list, which returns one namespace, it contains the function run, which will run the code, and it contains the function help, which will give some detailed help when we ask with a question mark. Lists will be used to produce the information when we ask for general information about all the commands and help will give you detailed information about the command itself. Now let's say we want to write a command called time and this command will return the actual time. Here we have written the code for our command. It contains the three functions list, run and help. List is used to show a short description when we enter the right bracket question mark so that it's listed with all the other commands. There's a short one-liner that appears there and we've put something here that says it displays the time. The name of the command is time. It's part of my commands. The run function is the one that does the work. In this case here all it does is format quads and help is the function that will return help when we ask for right bracket question mark time which is the name of our command. First we need to save the command and we store the command into a file named time, which has been put with all the other user commands. We are now ready to try the command. Sure enough, it works well. Does help work? Yes, we get some help. And it should appear in the list of all the user commands. Here it is. Et voila, right here in the group my commands, the command time with our one-liner. Now let's say that uh, we wanted to add another command, the same type of command, it's a time related command and but we would like to know what is the UTC time for example. It would make sense to put this command with the other one. We would only have one namespace containing two commands which are related, it would make sense. Well let's do it. Now have we written the code. Now this namespace is different. You can see that I've added QuadML inside the namespace so that we're not affected by the external value when we define the namespace. I've also changed list to return now two namespaces instead of one. Each namespace still returns group, parse, name and describe, but this time they have two values. The time group is the same in both cases, the parsing rules are the same, but the name of the first command is time, the name of the second command is UTC, and the description of the first one is show local time, and the other one is show UTC time. 
as for the run function I'm now making use of the command argument because I need to know which command we're using and I've changed the code so that now it uses .NET instead of using QuadTS to return the time so I have to use quad using and I determined the date time using the date time dot now method and if it's UTC which is the command then I called the function Zulu now Zulu merely makes a call to this method with the date that I give it as an argument finally I format to the date remove leading blanks and return it I've also modified the help function so that depending on which command and now I'm using the argument if it's time I return this help and if it's UTC I return the other help now let's try them salt kicks in and tells us that we've modified the file which is normal so we want to make the changes and file it again and now we try it now let's see time still working now let's try UTC hey seems to be working also since we are in the eastern North American time zone this makes sense okay what about the help still works what about the help for UTC still works how about is it appearing in our list of all the commands yes there it is the time group contains time and UTC with our short description for each one of them okay let's say now we want to add a new command a uh, command that would tell us the time in cities around the world for example Paris, Toronto, Montreal now we could have a new command for each one of those cities or what we could do is use the command time that we have now but give it an argument if we don't give it an argument it returns the local time if we give it an argument it tells us time in one of those cities that we mention well, here I have changed the list function only to show a different description for the time function which has changed now and I can show the local time in a city more importantly I have changed the function so that it deals with UTC time and if not then four different cities around the world we could have as many as we want but for the sake of the example there's only four and what we do is that we find the cities we compare with the argument this gives us the offset of the city that we have as an argument then we find what the UTC time is then we add the offset to the date and we return the result and of course the help has been changed also for the time command now let's try it time yes the time in LA hey seems to work let's try to ask for the time in Sydney yes the user command framework comes with a lot more useful tools for example it can actually parse the arguments of your commands and determine if you have enough arguments in there if you decide for example that you want exactly three arguments and will refuse to call your code if there isn't exactly three arguments you could also have switches and the framework will actually make sure that the switches are present or absent or valid there's a lot more that can be done but this should get you going. So good luck.